This is the GMAT 41 Support Student Education Initiative Program. You are welcome to our mathematics class for senior secondary school students. In this video, we are going to look at the topic, the concept of numbers and place values. Of course, this happens to be our very first topic in this program. So, I want to use this opportunity to urge you and appeal to you all to talk about this program to your friends and encourage them to contact us in order to join this program that is specially designed to develop and improve students' understanding and background of mathematics and science. At the end of this topic, what are you expected to know? Here on the board, we have the topic objective. We'll be looking forward to two four basic concepts rather, or four basic objectives which you're expected to know at the end of this topic. One of them is, you should be able to identify the two broad concepts of numbers. And then, you should also be able to identify all the subsets of a real number. At the end of this topic, you are also expected to be able to give examples of the subset of a real number. And finally, you are expected to be able to identify the place value of real numbers. May I start by asking you this question? What do you know about numbers before? Of course, you know in the study of mathematics, what we deal with majorly are numbers. All right? We play around with numbers to solve basic human problems. Well, we're going to start with our very first objective, the concept of numbers, all right? Now, on the board, we have the concept of numbers, and it might interest you to know that there are two broad concepts of numbers. One of the type of number we have is real numbers, real numbers, all right? And then, of course, we have the imaginary numbers. The real numbers we use are to represent them. And of course, imaginary numbers we use I to represent them. You can see them on the board there, okay? This symbol and this symbol. Our real numbers are usually shown on what we call the real number line. Have you seen the real number line before? Maybe yes, maybe no. In either case, anyway, we have it on the board here. This line is what we call the real number line. If you look at this line properly, you would agree with me that the line is divided into two parts. The positive side and what? The negative side. Zero is what divides this real number line into these two parts that I've mentioned. Now, the positive side moves up to plus infinity. This symbol is infinity. And then the negative side moves up to minus infinity. But anyway, let me quickly say this, please. We don't have any number called infinity. The concept of infinity as used here is simply to show the boundary, let's say the end point of our real numbers. Is that okay? And as we know, our real number, we don't know where it ends. That's why we have to use infinity to serve as the boundary. What about imaginary numbers? What do you know about imaginary numbers? Have you seen any imaginary number before? Or have you worked with any imaginary number before? All right, let us do this. Get your calculator quickly. Now, I want you to press square root of any negative number of your choice. Then press equal to. Perhaps your calculator may have told you math error. That's to say, I do not recognize this number. So just like the name goes, imaginary, you know, just like you imagine something. This number ordinarily do not exist. These numbers, they do not exist. But we imagine it, that okay, this could be what this number should be. Now, we represent the imaginary number on a plane that we call the complex plane. We have it here, usually the y-axis, that's where we represent 
the imaginary number. Because of course, as you could see, the real numbers take the x axis. Hence, the imaginary number is usually assigned to the y axis. We're going to treat the concept of imaginary number in further mathematics, so we'll meet it subsequently as we continue in this program. Next, we are going to identify all the subsets of a real number. So we're looking at objective number two. Yes, real numbers, they have different subsets under them, and that's what we are going to talk about now. So, what are the subsets of real numbers? Right, but first, it's important for us to know the meaning of subset. When you hear subset, all right, it, it simply means part of. Okay, so we want to find out the numbers that make up real numbers, right? Those numbers that form part of real numbers. Now we know what subset means. We want to look at the various subsets of real numbers. And here on the board, we have these subsets. So are you ready to learn about them? Okay, so let's go. We have that which we call natural numbers and we use N to represent natural numbers. Capital letter N, that's uppercase. Examples of natural numbers are our counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and you move on, alright? The next are integers. Integers are also a subset of natural numbers, and so we use z to represent integers. We have positive and negative integers. Of course, you can see the symbol I used there, z plus on top, that is positive integers, and then z minus, which represents negative integers. Examples of integers, we have them here on the board. Negative numbers and positive numbers that look like natural numbers. Zero is also inclusive. Now, this is the idea of integers, okay? You pick your natural numbers. I just give examples of natural numbers. Then, you introduce negative to them. So you have the positive side and the negative side. Then zero inclusive. So zero is an integer. Take notes, not a natural number. And that is why we cannot say that zero is positive we cannot say that zero is negative because it is part of a number that contains both positive and what negative whereby the zero uh, demarcates okay it kind of divide this positive and uh, the negative side so take note once again zero is not a positive number and it is not what a negative number the next subset of real numbers are rational numbers and what are our rational numbers we have this rational number here on the bar the symbol we use for that is q now natural numbers they are fractions that have exact values what do we mean by fractions that have exact values some of them we refer to, to, to them as terminating decimal. There are others we call recurring decimals. Now, if I give you such fractions and I said, okay, you should find their values, you will notice that some of them will be recurring, others will be terminating decimal. Examples of such numbers that are rational numbers, we have 1 over 2. If you evaluate 1 over 2, you are going to get 0 0.5. So it, it terminates at that 0.5. No other number continues it, okay? Then we have 2 over 5. If you evaluate 2 over 5, you're going to get 0 0.4. You see that it terminated at that 0.4. It didn't continue. What about 10 over 9? Evaluate 10 over 9, and you would see that you would get 1.11111. 1, 1, 1, 1. It continues, so it's a recurring decimal. Is that okay? And now what about 1 over 3? Evaluate that you get 0 0.33333 and some other examples. Alright, let us now look at another subset of real numbers. This time around, this subset we refer to it as irrational numbers. Irrational numbers. We use Q' prime to represent irrational numbers. And what 
are irrational numbers. See, there are these fractions that when you evaluate them, the way the value would be would be quite scattered. It will give you a definite pattern. It will not have a, an exact value. Are you getting me right? Such fractions, they fall under irrational numbers. Example of such fraction is 1 over 7. You can find that out. You notice that the format of the decimal is not arranged. It's not terminating. It doesn't stop at a particular point. And it, did not, it will not show a particular pattern of recurrence. All right. Sort are also irrational numbers. Sort. You know we're going to study sort in the course of this program in mathematics. Root 2, root 7, root 6. What are sodic number even? Sodic number are simply square root of non-perfect square numbers. Square root of what? Non-perfect square numbers. You know, we have numbers we call perfect squares, like 4, like 9, 16, 25. If you take the square root of such number, we don't refer to them as sorts because they will give you whole numbers. They will give you natural numbers as value. For example, square root of 4 will give you 2. Square root of, of 9 will give you 3. I hope you're following, right? So those ones are not sad. But if I give you square root of non-perfect numbers, numbers that are not perfect square, just like I have example square root of 2, square root of 7, square root of 6, these numbers, they fall under irrational numbers. So we refer to them as sordic numbers. We're going to study them when we treat sorts. Pi is also an irrational number. Pi is a constant. Is that okay? It's a constant. If you evaluate pi, you are going to get 3.142 something. The number continues. Of course, you know that pi in the study of uh, geometry, right? Or measuration. Measuration, we use pi to be equal to 22 over 7. That is not the exact value, like 3.142, that we evaluate it to be. Uh, if you to use the decimal, we usually use 3.142. That is not the exact value of pi. If you press it in your calculator, you will notice that the value continues, okay? We only use an approximate value. And the arrangement of that decimal is not in a particular format of arrangement. It's scattered. I hope you're following what I'm saying, okay? That's why we refer to it as an irrational number. Another one is exponential. We use E to represent it. Okay, exponential. You have that key in your calculator so you can search for it. E, exponential. It's also an irrational number. If you press exponential 1, for example, you would get 2.71 something. So it continues in that order, very scattered. Okay, so the decimal does not have a particular pattern. And sometimes to make someone understand it, I, I call it a, a scattered decimal. Okay, <laughs> scattered decimal. So all these uh, are examples of uh, irrational number. We use Q prime to represent it. Now we've known the subsets of real numbers. Please, I want you to take note of the following things on the board here. Okay, that real numbers, it's simply natural number union, integer union, rational number union, irrational number. You know, the concept of union, we study it under set. We'll meet all this when we discuss set theory. Then, take note that natural number is a proper subset of integers. I take that again. Natural numbers, N, is a proper subset of integers. What do we mean by that? What do we mean by saying that natural number is a proper subset of integers? It simply means that natural number, the form part of integers, and of course that's what we can really observe here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they are part of these integers, alright? Natural number is simply the positive part of integers. So you can see that natural number forms part of integers. We say they are proper subsets because integers are not natural numbers. But natural numbers are integers. As a natural numbers form part of integers. But integers, all right, do not give you natural numbers. Because in natural numbers, we don't have negative values. But in integers, we have a 
negative values. Now we've treated the subset of real numbers. We've also given examples of real numbers. It's very important now because of what I want us to study next. We are going to look at place values of real numbers. Now that we are done with the subset of real numbers, we would like to conclude this topic by looking at place values of real numbers. The concept of place value is something I want to believe that most of us have this knowledge right from our basic level of study that this senior class. But it's a very important concept in the study of mathematics, okay, place values and you want to take it very seriously because of its application in some other topics, all right? So I, I try to do something here, just a very uh, nice design, you love that, right? Okay, so let us see, here I have dot, 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 then I continue with 100 trillion, 10 trillion, trillion, this dot, dot, dot is simply to tell us that the place value can still continue. Of course, you know our number does not stop at trillion. We could have quadrillion, quintillion, right? And even up to nonillion. Nonillion is, oh, how many zeros there? You can just check that out. All right, then, if you look at this right hand side, you notice that before the right hand side, we have a dot there. That dot is our decimal point. Decimal point. The left hand side I use black marker to write are the whole number part. So the right hand side of the whole number part after the decimal point are the decimal numbers. And then you could see their place values as well too. I don't think I need to talk much on this place value because the concept that we must have been used to. My interest is the number that we gave to us and the standard values assigned to this place values. Look at units. Unit is 10 raised to power 0. 10 raised to power 0 gives you 1. So numbers from 1 to 9 fall under units. Then tens is 10 raised to power 1. We have a 1000. 1000 is 10 raised to power 3. Look at 100, 10 raised to power 2. That power is very, very important to us. We're going to encounter the use of these powers in some other topics we're going to meet as we move on in this subject. Look at that of trillion, 100 trillion here is 10 raised to the power 14. Okay, now in the decimal part, let us take a look at certain differences. Observe that in the decimal part, there is nothing like units. Our decimal numbers, the place value starts with tens. Tens. And tens, the standard value is 10 raised to the power minus 1. Move on to hundreds. 10 raised to the power minus 2. Of course, in the concept of this raised to the power minus, raised to the power minus, which we see in the decimal part, is still the same as having 1 over, all right? Like in this case, it is 1 over 10 raised to the power 1. That is 1 over 10. This will now become 1 over 10 raised to the power 2, which is 1 over 100. This thousand is 1 over 10 raised to the power 3, which is the same as 1 over 1,000, okay? And so if you're writing it in negative power, this is what you're going to get. We'll encounter something like this under indices. But like I said, I had to introduce this concept into this topic because the next topic we're going to be looking at number system where we will do setting conversion from one base to another base. Possibly you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so in a case where we have a decimal number, we must respect the use of these powers. Even the aspect of whole numbers, we need this power grading to be able to soft setting problems under number system and of course we're going to see that in our next topic until then please remember to share our videos and talk about the gmat 41's support student education initiative a wonderful program that is established to give you the best principle of math and science